Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the pitching session on call seven, topic one, improving clinical management of heart disease from early detection to treatment. Uh, just something really important before we start. So I just want to let you know that this session will be recorded as well as the presentation and we will it will be published on our uh, website and also on the B2Match platform. Uh, so now, uh, as you can see on the slide, we will start with our first feature, SAN nodes. So SAN, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, still waiting for the slides to show up. Yes. Thank you. All right, so I'm uh, Sandra Nautz. I'm a senior scientist with Philips, focusing on patient experience and workflow. And this uh, topic is actually led by my colleague, Jauke, who is a um, uh, clinical scientist focusing on cardiac MR. But because this week there is a large uh, cardiac MR conference in London, I have the honor of talking to you about diagnostic imaging and monitoring of common cardiac diseases. Next slide, please. So in a nutshell, we propose to create a very scalable solution for the assessment of cardiac anatomy and function that can be used for any cardiac disease, but with a specific focus on the com most common cardiac diseases that can be used for any patient with very easy operation by any operator. So why do we need this? Uh, next slide, please. So cardiac MRI is a very comprehensive diagnostic tool for cardiology. Uh, but unfortunately, its widespread application has mostly been limited to relatively rare cardiac conditions. So things like congenital heart disease, uh, cardiomyopathy, iron overload. Well, uh, it's been a bit underutilized for more common cardiac uh, conditions. So things like structural heart disease, coronary heart disease, and cardiac arrhythmias. And we believe that this disparity does not stem from a lack of confidence in what MRI can bring. The image quality is, is wonderful, uh, but the problem with uh, cardiac MRI is that it's often regarded as relatively expensive, um, difficult to plan and use for staff, and also with uh, limited uh, patient experience. Next slide, please. Other modalities that have been utilized quite a lot are uh, CT and echocardiography. Uh, but of course, CT uh, exposes patients to ionizing radiation and echocardiography has a lot of benefits, but it does require quite a lot of time investment from a skilled operator. And we've seen over time that it can be quite hard to automate this. Next slide. So for patients, unfortunately, having an MRI exam can be quite an anxiety provoking stressful, stressful experience, as you can see in these quotes from patients. And we think that to make MR more attractive to be used to diagnose uh, common cardiac diseases, we need to invest in things that really help patients feel better. So things like ultra fast scanning, um, but also uh, inboard patient entertainment and patient guidance, as well as wireless sensing. Next slide. For staff, we also need new things. We need uh, um, them to be able to scan patients with implants, Fast scanning helps for staff as well. And of course, there's a lot of attention that needs to be given to automatic, uh, automatic cardiac planning. Next slide. And because cardiac diseases often manifest under stress, uh, we believe that having ergometers in the MRI scanner can also bring a lot of uh, benefit in terms of uh, diagnosis of common cardiac diseases. Next slide. To sum up, uh, we would like to focus on really uh, making sure that MRI is utilized much more to, um, uh, to diagnose common cardiac ailments. And we believe this has several advantages, such as uh, providing better access to high quality diagnostic cardiac images for clinical trials, but also the, avail the ability to really develop personalized treatment options based on the results of MRI scans. And we believe that early detection and diagnosis could really help uh, and lead to improved market access for therapies. Next slide. So Philips works in the whole health continuum from healthy living to home care. In this proposal, we mostly offer expertise on diagnosis, workflow, and patient experience. 
We're already in conversations with quite a number of partners, but if there are partners such as uh, medtech companies, pharmaceutical companies, or a hospital that are interested in treatment and diagnosis, then we're always open for discussions. That's it, thank you. Thank you very much, Stan. So the next speaker uh, is going to be Raquel as Christelle hasn't joined us. So uh, I will, yes, Raquel, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Waiting for the slides as well. Okay, great. Good afternoon to all, I'm Raquel. I'm a clinical project manager from TUCA Braga here on the behalf of a dynamic consortium comprising TUCA Braga, LabRise and CEA. I will present our innovative concept, a smart skin patch for monitoring patients at risk of heart failure and our ambitious goals to revolutionize the clinical management of heart diseases by joining a broader consortium. Next slide, please. Heart failure poses a significant challenge for clinicians due to late diagnosis and frequent disease exacerbations. Delays on the detection of exacerbation often results in more severe damage for the patient. So our objective is to improve the clinical management of heart failure patients by enabling the long-term monitoring of patients through a user-friendly at-home medical device providing crucial information for clinicians. This way, we will reduce the severity and mortality of the disease, alleviate the burden on healthcare systems by minimizing hospitalizations, enhance clinical management through earlier intervention and medication adjustments, and empower patients through a telemonitoring uh, solution that fosters a deeper understanding of the disease and its symptoms. Next slide, please. Our solution is a smart skin patch designed for monitoring crucial clinical parameters in heart failure patients. Our wearable device will detect multiple protein markers like BNP, CA125 and others. From a clinical perspective, monitoring vital signs like heart rate and weight is crucial. Therefore, our device will include features like electrocardiogram, heart rate and bioimpedance. This device equipped with telemonitoring capabilities enables long-term and at-home patient monitoring, ensuring the convenience for the patient. The compact and easy of use wearable is also minimally invasive. The main activities of the project involve device production, multiple parameters data fusion and exploitation, testing and clinical validation under the medical device regulation. Next slide, please. So what do we offer? UCA Braga is a clinical research center supporting product development through clinician expertise and patient insights and provides services of clinical validation under the medical device regulation. LabRise is a research center specialized in biomimetic material synthesis and in the development testing of sensing devices. CEA is a research and technical organization with expertise in electronic, electronic sensor printing, stretchable wearable substrates, system architecture, and data fusion. Together, we provide comprehensive expertise and resources to meet at least objectives 2, 3, and date of this call. Next slide, please. While our, our, while our solution primarily focus on monitoring heart failure patients, the versatility of our device extends beyond. It can also play a role in detection and diagnosis, not only in heart failure settings, but also other cardiovascular diseases. So in our pursuit for encompassing the entire spectrum of care from early detection to treatment, we are actively seeking to expand our consortium. We are looking for industry and contributing partners bringing in-kind contributions with expertise in software development, AI algorithms for personalized care, and end-user end for device integration. Collaboration with partners in digital health and telemonitoring platform is also crucial for the project. Our consortium is also open to incorporate public partners, regulators, and patient organizations, fostering a holistic approach to meet the objectives of the call. Next slide, please. So let's join together in advancing innovation and creating impact on patients, healthcare professionals, healthcare systems and companies by improving the clinical management of heart diseases. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Raquel, for your presentation. Now our next speaker is Yona.
Yes, hi. Can you start the presentation, please? Hi, I'm Jonas Marcello. I'm the department head of the digital health engineering department at Fraunhofer IESE, and I want to pitch today a project for a radar based heart monitoring. Uh, next slide, please. Um, as you all know that in hospitals and general healthcare settings, there is a huge manual effort to monitor, uh, especially cardiac and, and heart signals for patients like they have to be monitored. They have to get patches on their chest to, to get the ECG. They have to be wired and all of this needs to be done by professional healthcare staff because it cannot be done by uh, amateurs. Uh, some patients are also difficult to, to monitor. For example, if you have a burnt chest, you won't be able to get patches there. Uh, children or demand patients might tear off their patches. And uh, so what we want to develop here or further improve is a contactless measurement of ECG using radar technology. And the radar um, should be easily installable like a box under the bed and should, should deliver real-time data of heart and cardiac function to the end that the healthcare staff needs less manual work, no more wiring, and they can focus on the more important tasks. Um, next slide, please. Um, so, as I said, we want to develop or further improve the radar. The prototype is already existing, make it workable as a, like a shoebox kind sized thing that you can place under the bed of the patients. And we want to have embedded technology there so that all data processing is happening on the device itself and not in the cloud somewhere. And we need to develop and further improve ML and AI models. There's a lot of development here to get the signal from noise ratio better so that patients can move freely in the bed and the, the ECG will be automatically detected furthermore. We also want to detect uh, situations like thrombosis and so on. And all of this should be developed with standardized open APIs, especially FHIR, so that the data can be used for real-time data exchange and not proprietary data flows. Uh, next slide, please. Um, what we are bringing to the table is a consortium of a couple of German partners at the moment. So we have the Fraunhofer Institute, which is the world leading institute for applied science and research. Uh, we also bring Setlabs and the TU Hamburg Harburg, who have prior experience in AI algorithms and in uh, neural nets to analyze the data from radars, especially ECG and other heart sensors from there. And um, we also work together with the Charité in Berlin, which is a hospital featuring uh, Professor Köhler from the cardiovascular department. And then we're working at the moment with Infineon, who will supply us with radar technology and Bechtle, who will be part of the distribution as an IT service provider. And next slide, please. And what we're looking for at the moment is uh, international hospitals or other healthcare providers that would be interested in prototyping the radar in helping us sketching out the use cases and the requirements for both for patients, but also for the healthcare staff that also would be willing to t take part in an ethical vote to see uh, if we can uh, monitor patients. And we're also looking for industry partners who have experience in signal processing, in wireless technology. Um, we're looking for SMEs or partners who are device manufacturers for medical devices or medical device distributors. And we're also very interested in regulatory aspects. So uh, consultancies or regulatory bodies that would be interested in joining because ultimately we would like to make a medical device out of it. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, you can reach me here on the IHI platform or LinkedIn. Uh, thanks a lot. Thank you very much, uh, Jonas. Uh, the next speaker is on the list. It's Françoise. Françoise, the floor is yours. Yes, good afternoon. Thank you. Um, I work in Grenoble, France, at CLET. Uh, it's a public research and technology organization. We are specialized on miniaturized technologies that are of great interest to achieve this non-invasive and very personalized monitoring in cardiology. Next slide. So we have three different and innovative solutions that target the second bullet point of the scope, that is to improve patients' outcomes. Of course, uh, regarding heart disease management, we believe that our technologies really help, but the most important for us is really to improve patients' comfort and their acceptance of a close cardiac monitoring 
whatever the care setting, including home care. And we can provide in these conditions a whole work package to develop and test innovative sensing solutions, among which, of course, ours. And my colleague Caroline will propose a complementary pitch offer about cancer biomarkers on Thursday. Next slide. Here are some examples of different contexts of use for our technologies that I will develop later. First example, uh, in many situations, hypotension or on the contrary, hypertension situations are important for heart disease management. What we have is a device that allows a cuffless blood pressure measurement, that is to say more comfort for the patient and more representative measurements. The second example, is uh, you know that anti pro -BNP is an important biomarker, especially for heart failure, but cortisol is also of good interest for long-time monitoring and secondary prevention. And here we propose a new dev device based on microneedles that samples and measures these biomarkers through the skin, absolutely painless, so it can be done frequently. And as a third example, you have this, um, you may have this need to measure several biomarkers with a high sensitivity and very fast response time in primary care settings, not at hospital or emergency room. And this is possible thanks to our microfluidic integrated device. Next slide. I'm going to highlight now some strengths of our solutions in heart disease management. For the first one, cuffless blood pressure, uh, uh, it's, it's the multimodal nature of these devices that ensures robustness. We did it on ECG PPG and we are able to go much further. We have an excellent environment at Leti to add other parameters and other modalities quoted here as well as communication and energy supply that are ex extremely important, where we benefit from the very last technologies. On the second example, on the micro needle patch, we have a double strength here. One is our micro needles that are biocompatible and also resorbable. And two, we work with a young Swiss company, Xensio, to provide the full solution, that is the patch and the management system of the patch. And the third example here uh, about the integrated protocol, it's we, we integrate a very complex protocol on our microfluidic chip, including sample preparation that is not common with excellent results. So please refer to the document that I put on the marketplace. And the next slide. Thank you, it's a bit slow. Uh, usually in this kind of projects, our main deliverable is a set of uh, prototypes. I mean, CE mark compliant prototypes uh, to allow a feasibility study, uh, depending of course of the budget and planning, but we can go up to 50 patients for wearable systems and up to 100 microfluidic cartridges that can be associated with two instruments, uh, for instance, for two sites. And on the right side, you will see our partners. Um, they are very, very motivated professionals in cardiology and ICUs in large university hospitals in France, in Montpellier, in Grenoble, in Saint-Étienne, and in Paris. And we have also a privileged relationship with Luxembourg Institute of Health, and Yvon is going to pitch soon, in Serm Transfer, and two brilliant partnering SMEs, uh, Let It Care in, in France and Xensio in Switzerland. And all can be found on IHI platform, so I encourage you to, to visit their pages. Thank you very much. Thank you, Francoise, for your presentation. Now it's uh, Melik's turn. Hello everyone, uh, I am Melike Cholak. I, I am a machine learning engineer at BITES. Today I'm going to present artificial intelligence expertise in heart disease diagnosis. Next slide, please. Uh, to start with challenges and objectives, according to the World Health Organization, cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of death worldwide, accounting, to, accounting for nearly 31% uh, of all fatalities each year, and CVDs cause more than 70 million deaths per year, with a projected increase to uh, 23 million by 2030, and the distribution of CVD mortality is a major problem with medium and low combinations, accounting for 75% uh, of the total. 
and CVD therapy imposes a significant financial burden, including diagnostic and drug expenditures. And the worldwide uh, cost of CVD therapy in low and middle income countries is expected to be over uh, $3.8 trillion between 2011 and 2025. And the traditional techniques to cardiac treatment frequently need an in-depth understanding of individual cardiac disease and a significant learning curve for manual analysis, resulting in limits. Um, machine learning-based approaches have emerged as a possible alternative with an emphasis on feature extraction and uh, signal classification, notably for arrhythmia identification and automated uh, ECG signal processing. Next slide, please. Uh, in this image, we are looking at the fundamental activities of AI applications. Uh, the starting with medical imaging, uh, imaging, we gather critical information about patients using advanced imaging techniques, and these data are then securely stored during the data collection and storage phase. After the pre-processing and cleaning, we select the machine learning algorithms for model training, and we evaluate the diagnostic capabilities of these models by analyzing the results. And ultimately, these analyses assist our doctors in better understanding patients' conditions and making accurate diagnosis. Next slide, please. So, uh, what we offer, uh, statistical and mathematical skills, possesses a team of expert engineers and mathematicians, expertise in various data formats, proficient in handling different types of data sets, including medical images, CSV files, sensors, and time series data machine learning model development. Uh, we are specialized in creating a range of machine learning models and the marketplace impacts significant influence in the industry uh, due to the team's ex uh, extensive experience and di uh, diverse AI algorithms knowledge. We are proficient in various, uh, various AI algorithms such as uh, MLP, CNN, RNN, LSTM or transformers and uh, experience in uh, AI-driven projects. We are demonstrated success in developing projects powered, uh, powered by AI. And the last one is contribution to collaboration, uh, promotes the use of advantage, uh, advanced uh, statistical methods in various projects. Next slide, please. Uh, so, expertise request. Uh, we need data providers according to the specific topic and uh, medical professionals who expertise us in analyzing the medical data. And the last one is multi-stakeholder project management. To summarize, um, by taking inspiration from the expertise of BITES, we are certainly eager to join a consortium and accordingly, we are ready to make significant contributions to the fields of machine learning and data analysis. Thank you. Thank you, Melike. Now it's uh, our next speaker is Ms. Norman. Yes, greetings everyone. Uh, so I'm here to add the innovative part of the health tech technologies by a group of uh, innovators. So uh, next slide, please. Uh, the whole call uh, of the heart health was actually aligned with our current partner uh, impact that we're making. So we're always looking for the early screening management as well as post discharge in different kind uh, technologies to support these patient groups. We do that through several brands as, as well as always looking for affordable, available, accessible solution. Uh, next slide, please. So the key concept, the back end of the solution is, of course, the remote monitoring platform that is able to adjust and customize based on the, the project needs. It's already uh, demonstrated uh, up to 35% of uh, savings for the CVD patient use case comparing to non use of the remote monitoring. Uh, we're able to address the starting from early screening uh, campaigns, treatment management, as well as post discharge with the same software solution, which also includes the patient app, uh, clinical dash dashboards, as well as the doctor app for rural areas. And we're adding the innovative edge. Uh, and I'll give you a few examples. Next slide, please. The platform has already been deployed in, in uh, 10 years in 10 different countries. So it's a really high level of automation. You can see some of the brands already uh, using the solution. So one nurse can take up to 500 patients monitor remotely because the automation is so high that she only needs to pay attention to the uh, alerts that has been set there. We're able to customize build the, the pathway for this heart 
uh, disease patient needs, as you see in the picture below, as well as we're able to connect any kind of uh, connected devices. Those could be the Bluetooth devices, as well as uh, cellular level devices. We have used those kind of corporations in many projects, so we device agnostic uh, in, for, for the ECG, blood pressure, scale, etc. And next slide, please. One of the innovative parts that we added, you can see I made myself yesterday and blood pressure measurement for myself. It's something that we're able to, to scale uh, for the early screening because put a re regular physical device is quite expensive. So the technology allows here to basically integrate a selfie camera to monitor the, the blood pressure, as well as through the project, we would be willing to work further of different arrhythmia identification as well. This has been class one and it will be class two in the upcoming time during the, the project uh, uh, time as well. So next slide. Uh, another area where we get the uh, data from the ECG signal is, of course, the automated AI analytics that has already proven themselves in early screening, as well as uh, patient management. So more than 300 biomarkers at this point has been uh, already analyzed, and we're looking at stress, emotions, fatigue, recovery, those kind of scores to really support the patient throughout the pathway. And this is all about the personal baseline calculation, which is aligned with the project needs here as well. And you can see a visual uh, graphic how the calculations are happening uh, underneath. Uh, next slide. Uh, and the, the last innovation as, as part of the solution and the concept, which is really aligned with every calls and European health data space uh, guidelines is the, of course, about the patient data uh, and the data governments. In this case, we offer the data consent as a service, which is a blockchain based sensitive data governance. And we have an NGO, uh, NGO, Danish NGO supporting that process. And you can see the award already. And we've been part working already in the uh, PCP project with this initiative with very high level positive feedback from European Union bodies. So we are able to bring this technology here as well and develop it further on the next slide. So just to quickly summarize, we are able to bring the innovative, scalable, affordable technology. Uh, also support with dissemination and communication. We have great experience in that, including the, the LinkedIn communication, as well as the key opinion leaders in the networks and patient organizations from, from two countries of so the CBD patients we're able to provide to the consortium as well. So we're looking for a consortium to join. Thank you. Thank you, Normons. Now our next speaker is Ivan. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to, to pitch this afternoon. And also thank you to, we'd like to thank my colleague, Francois Charby, for the kind introduction that she has given. We really hope that we could uh, go together uh, uh, for this uh, IHI program. So uh, I'm the leader of the Cardiovascular Research Group at the Luxembourg Institute of Health. And I've also had and still have some uh, activities, networking activities funded by the European Commission been a past chair and currently the vice chair of uh, large uh, networks of more than uh, 300 members from uh, from all over Europe and I'm, I've also been the coordinator of one major H2020 project and currently I'm a partner of uh, Horizon uh, Europe project and also IMI uh, two projects so um, a couple of uh, uh, European uh, activities right now next slide please uh, so we are from uh, from Luxembourg. We are public research center uh, uh, between Belgium, as you can see on the slide, uh, uh, Germany and France, uh, with the aim to improving personalized healthcare. We are targeting multiple diseases, including brain and heart problems, and uh, we hope that we can find uh, some uh, uh, novel uh, find on, on, and validate some novel biomarkers and treatments for heart and brain problems. Next, please. So we are interested not only in topic one, but also in topic three for the uh, biomarker part, because we are indeed very much interested in biomarkers. Uh, next, please. Um, uh, biomarkers and also especially uh, RNA biomarkers. Uh, RNA biomarkers because we believe that these small molecules that are circulating in our blood can uh, mediate some of the interactions between the brain and the heart, as you can see on this uh, uh, drawing, which are very important and which can be used to define some uh, novel biomarkers for the diagnosis, for disease monitoring, and also to treat uh, the patients. So there is really a potential of RNA molecules to be used to improve clinical management and also to improve the outcome of, of the patients. So as I said, we are interested in the uh, two topics, one and three of course. Next, please. 
So uh, what is our know-how and techniques? Uh, uh, so we are obviously, we do have some experience in RNA biomarkers, uh, um, like different kinds of RNAs, messenger RNAs, micro RNAs, long run coding RNAs, circular ones. And we are also interested in uh, RNA modifications, chemical RNA modifications. We do some discovery with uh, the traditional sequencing and we do the validation with quantitative PCR in large patient cohorts, uh, several thousands of patients. And we also used uh, nanopore direct sequencing and uh, 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 liquid chromatography coupled to mass spectrometry for uh, to study RNA uh, methylation profiles. Uh, in terms of treatment, so we have a, a fully equipped uh, a molecular biology wet lab where we can do some gain and loss of function experiments using small interfering RNAs, gap mass plasmids, try to decipher the role of these RNA molecules in the progression of the disease. We have a, a, a strong partnership with a platform in my institution, a bioinformatics platform, and also statisticians, uh, because this is extremely important, obviously, in the kind of activities related to biomarkers and other treatments of uh, patients with cardiovascular problems. Next, please. What we are interested in is to develop multimodal approaches, not only based on blood biomarkers, but also on imaging data. I have heard that uh, some uh, past speakers have got experience in the field, uh, notably related to artificial intelligence, uh, interpretation of imaging data. And uh, we also aim to uh, um, uh, put together uh, with these data, uh, digital data, data coming from wearables, smartwatches, smartphone apps, and again, expertise that we have uh, heard in the past um, uh, few minutes. And of course, together with clinical data, we believe that we can extract from all these kind of data really nice predictive models using artificial intelligence. As I said, we are not limited to cardiovascular problems, but we are also interested in metabolic issues like diabetes, inflammatory disease, neurological diseases such as Parkinson's disease, and also we have some activities related to long COVID. Next, please. Uh, we have, uh, uh, in the past, uh, uh, patented a few of our discoveries, uh, five uh, uh, patents that are currently active, plus two licenses. This is just to, to show you that we are also active in terms of intellectual property generation. Next, please. And this is my last one. Uh, we are obviously open for collaboration, uh, either as a partner, eventually as a coordinator, because I told you that we have expertise in, in coordinating large uh, EU-funded projects, and we are also able to provide in-time contribution uh, as, a, as an academic partner. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Yvonne, for your presentation. And our, not, uh, our next speaker, sorry, it's Yvette. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Yvette Jakob. I'm a research uh, manager at Yagma, a small research organization from the Netherlands. We are offering a service which is rather niche, but I believe very important now. It's the impact assessment of AI in healthcare. Next slide, please. So the challenge that we are facing as artificial intelligence and digital transformation is getting widely introduced is concerns about their impact on our society's healthcare system and the environment. To address these concerns of the end users, policy makers, patients, healthcare providers, and other stakeholders, we provide trustworthy and neutral assessment of the impacts of AI and digital health projects and products. Next slide, please. We strive to understand and describe these complex challenges and then use this knowledge to mindfully assess, predict, and monitor the broader intentional and non-intentional impact of digital solutions, AI systems, also innovative policies and other activities that realize the potential of the digital transitions. Next slide, please. We have projects in many different sectors, including transportation, aerospace, and also manufacturing. Our healthcare projects at the moment involve two Horizon Europe projects. One is Lucia, started this year. It's on understanding the lung cancer risk factors and their impact assessment. And the other one is called Realm. It's on creating a collaborative evaluation framework of software for medical and healthcare use. Next slide, please. About the tasks that we provide in these two um, huge consortiums, uh, we assess the ethical, social, and legal implications of new technologies either evaluated or developed by the consortium, as well as using our AI impact assessment framework that is now specified for healthcare use. 
conducting cost-benefit analysis, and organizing stakeholder engagement activities. How these all come together, I will explain in the next slide. Um, on the healthcare, at, sorry, on the healthcare uh, technologies that we assess, it includes medical devices, uh, patches, variables, also um, algorithms, clinical decision-making algorithms, and even innovative um, policy actions. How we can help you? First, of course, by utilizing our AI impact assessment framework, and this really ensures that the monitoring within the project of the AI developed uh, is uh, trustworthy. Overall, we do assess the biasness, the um, transferability, not transferability, <laughs> the transparency, the safety, and the explainability of the AI developed. How as is this done, we need very meaningful stakeholder engagement because these values often are in conflict with each other and we need meaningful stakeholders to be able to prioritize and decide the small decisions which come to us when developing AI also by broadening the impact to cost and benefits and the broader ethical, social and legal implications we aim to assess the AI developed and evaluated in these projects. Next slide, please. So we are happy to brainstorm about your project idea and consortiums on how we can add value. My name and email address are here. Happy to reach out on LinkedIn or the IHI platform and feel free to email us. Thank you for the attention. Thank you, Yvette, for your presentation. Our next speaker is Pavel. Hi, all. Um... Thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you, organizer, organizers, for um, putting this together and for the communication and the information and all the participants taking time to uh, listen to this. Uh, I'm presenting today a Nova Cardio device, which is a personal heart health monitoring device. Next slide, please. So uh, um, we have uh, fully developed and uh, are manufacturing this device. Um, it is a small portable device which allows to take a 30 second measurement or a recording of ECG and PPG. Uh, it can be done anywhere um, as long as you can sit down and rest at a table. Um, the device is um, um, very protected in terms of uh, uh, dust and, and water resistance uh, and um, it charges wirelessly. So basically just put it in a pocket and, and uh, you can go. Um, the recordings are analyzed uh, with the, using data, data science algorithms and AI algorithms. Um, based on those recordings, we identify all the necessary parameters uh, of the cardiovascular system. And through that, we can generate recommendations uh, to the person in terms of uh, lifestyle management and also when uh, it is a good time to see a doctor. And this also, the, the, the app that uh, is uh, 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 allows um, the doctor to see and manage the data uh, of uh, their patients and also to get some of uh, the recommendations. So why we think this is important uh, and in terms of the outcomes and the, the, the actual name of the call is the early detection uh, which we think um, uh, the best possible way to um, for early detection to happen is a, a, a very preventive way when when people can take a measurement once a week or, uh, or even better once a day but uh, let's be realistic at least once a week or maybe uh, uh, once two weeks uh, we can see its smallest trends uh, building up in the day which can um, signal us to go for a proper checkup to see a doctor and to show that the data that has been archived and managed throughout the time. Uh, this is the way I think the preventive uh, care for heart disease can happen because now it's basically about treating the disease rather than uh, preventing it. Um, next, slide, next slide, please. So the uh, main object objectives uh, uh, and the outcomes, expected outcomes for this call with our proposal uh, improved early detection. Uh, as I said, uh, this is kind of like a preventive approach. And enhanced uh, patient engagement and self-management. People can actually start um, being 
uh, more informed and educated about their heart health as they go along through uh, easygoing lifestyle recommendations and educational uh, information that comes within the app. Streamlined healthcare process. Uh, it's very easy for the doctors to to uh, see the data and be in the loop with the patient. Uh, not only when they come for checkup once a year for people who have already been diagnosed uh, only on scheduled calls, but they can they can manage them throughout the whole uh, cycle of the treatment. Data driven healthcare decisions uh, because of that vast archive. Uh, we identify about 103 parameters from from the uh, electric component of the cardiovascular health and the optical component. Uh, there are a lot of data which can be managed and uh, analyzed and learn um, to predict more in terms of uh, the health uh, status of the cardiovascular system. And of course, the economic impact. Um, this can allow doctors to better manage uh, who comes for checkup and at what moment, and uh, this will probably have a drastic impact in terms of uh, saving a lot of money on um, untimely checkups. Next slide, please. Uh, so our main activities in terms of uh, moving along, it's of course collaborating with medical professionals and seeing how uh, uh, how do, those type of devices and uh, Novocardio can be integrated into personalized patient care. Conducting joint research with um, uh, research institutions um, and uh, clinical uh, study, uh, clinical studies uh, to see uh, how far the technology can be pushed. Engaging um, uh, with patient advocacy groups, um, collaborating with groups to educate and ra raise public awareness that heart health is not only about going to the hospital, but you can actually manage it, um, self-manage it, uh, and do a lot of work by yourself. Developing training programs uh, for healthcare professionals on how to use those kind of devices and how to integrate them into uh, personal treatment plans. Policy advocacy engagement, of course, there are a lot of regulatory questions uh, in terms of um, using those type of devices and the data that is generated by uh, data science algorithms and IE, so uh, that needs to be um, uh, very importantly managed. Implementing data sharing protocols, I think it's um, very important how the data will be managed uh, between those devices and uh, the, the uh, whole uh, system management uh, software. Um, launching community health initiatives and conducting economical evaluations, as I said earlier. Next slide, please. Uh, we, uh, the expertise and resources we can offer, we have a very strong cardiovascular health uh, team and a lot of uh, um, experts that specialize in cardiology. Uh, of course, there is the biomedical engineering and device development. We know um, a lot about ACG and PPG technologies and how we can push them. Uh, data analysis and software development, the, the tech team is very strong in, in terms of that. And of course, device manufacturing. We can manufacture as many um, of those devices as needed for, uh, for this project uh, to, to show uh, how those outcomes uh, can um, uh, be met with the, within the call. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so we are looking to partner up with um, large companies, pharmaceutical, biotech, and medical device companies, uh, because we can see that that the, for for those type, we're a small company, and for us to actually move along, we do need a big partner uh, to see the larger scale uh, of the healthcare system. Uh, cardiovascular research centers, uh, that's the main point, uh, how we can validate and uh, um, uh, move along the readiness of this technology. Uh, healthcare providers, of course, we need to work with the hospitals and clinics to, to see the way for real integration. And uh, regulatory and compliance experts, uh, there are a lot of issues that needs to be addressed in terms of making those type of technologies um, compliant. Next slide, please. It was your last. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Sorry. 
Thank you, Pavel, for your presentation. Now I'm going to ask uh, Jua to take the virtual stage. Thank you. Hello, everybody. So my name is Juha Kotimala, and I'm here to represent and showcase VTT, or the Technical Resource Center of Finland, as a prospective partner for um, IHI call. Next slide, please. So uh, VTT is a state-owned research entity that is truly multidisciplinary. We span from nuclear research to quantum computing and bioprocess industry and different sensing technologies. Uh, we work with both private and public customers, academia, consortia, and naturally we have our own, own development projects and, and focus areas, and one of these happens to be biosensing. Uh, the challenge that we in general address is the facilitation of invent inventions towards a higher technological readiness level and towards commercialization. And in case of biomarkers, the challenge is not always the lack of suitable readouts, it's that the literature is flush with potential, but it's the development of these to a practical everyday use. And that's altogether another challenge. And um, so, for example, applying the biomarker for self or field testing uh, or continuous monitoring, that, that requires a kind of a multidisciplinary approach. At our VTT, our advantage is a comprehensive approach to biosensor development, and we have a long-standing interest in personalized medicine with field and point of care applications, which we facilitate with breadth of assay platforms and um, detection technologies to choose from. And importantly, we do have uh, downstream capabilities to manufacture uh, the, the, the sensors or, or assays so that analytical and clinical validation has the best chance of succeeding. Next slide, please. So our main activities, uh, we have early stage diagnostic development with our, our antibody discovery team, which I'm part of, I'm an immunologist. Uh, so we develop antibodies against conventional targets, but perhaps more of interest here is uh, that we can make antibodies and immunocomplex assays against non-conventional targets, such as drugs and toxins and hormones. Uh, we have different assay platforms to choose from, depending where the intended use of the assay is, whether it's point of care diagnostics. And we also develop different sorts of sensors. And, and we can apply different detection methodologies, uh, depending what is the most useful for the intended end use. And finally, uh, we have manufacturing, uh, pilot manufacturing capabilities, which supports the whole development uh, pipeline. We have bioprocessing manufacturing, so we can make proteins uh, for antigens or, or, for example, antibodies. And we have printing facilities for various platforms, including microfluidistics, uh, lateral flow assays, and wide variety of uh, variable applications for integrated sensors and, and patches that we've been hearing today. Next slide. And finally, what we bring to the table is a partner with an experience and networks to facilitate biomarker development in, an, in a standardized framework with a focus on customer and partner success. Um, we have our own proprietary technologies in addition to the pipeline to pilot manufacture novel tests and platforms. Uh, in, in case of, for example, printable electronics and variables, BTT is part of MedFab and Printers and Consortia, which are networks of more than 50 companies and research bodies whom we can draw expertise and experience and possibly partners as well. And I'd like to close up by thanking IHI for the pitching opportunity, and we're looking forward to connect with partners and consortia alike. And uh, we are also pitching on, on the 7.3 with another colleague of us. So thank you. Thank you for your presentation, uh, Jua. And now the next speaker is Yo Yordanis. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, so hello everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Yordanis Kutsopoulos. Uh, I come from the Athens University of Economics and Business, the Department of Informatics, and. Uh, the title of the pitch is about uh, responsible AI and advanced digital tools suitable for hair disease management. Next, please. 
Okay, so this is a topic one of call seven. Uh, heart disease management, as we know it, is a, is a procedure that involves a lot of complexity and it has many challenging issues such as uh, early detection, diagnosis, uh, treatment, uh, monitoring, and uh, management. And uh, in terms of data, uh, it uh, has also many unique challenges, such as um, the existence of multi-scale and multi-modal data, uh, streaming data uh, that uh, is collected uh, from phones or uh, sensors or other devices, and uh, so uh, the need also for continual monitoring um, gives rise to the need for continual uh, adaptation of the AI model. In addition, uh, this is a very sensitive um, area where uh, interpretability of uh, the results of the AI algorithms are needed. And last but not least, the need for multi-scale representation of cardiac functionalities. So uh, I'm here to uh, discuss three threads uh, that we are working on and have expertise in. Uh, the responsible AI, uh, learning from diverse and sparse data, and digital twins. Next slide, please. Okay, so in terms of responsible AI, we talked already about explainable AI and tools to do that, uh, to satisfy the patient right to explanation. Uh, in terms of continual learning, uh, the need to learn from continually evolving data, and as I said before, to adapt the machine learning model, and also two other aspects are uh, the need to train AI models out of distributed data without uh, having the data leave their location. So this uh, is uh, also uh, a cornerstone of responsible AI because it talks about privacy preservation and also uh, personalization of the results of the AI model. So next slide, please. In terms of the second thread, um, uh, dealing with uh, diverse data, here we do have expertise on uh, multimodal AI, that is uh, composing uh, models out of different types of data, such as uh, image, sound, medical records, tabular data, genetics, and so on. Um, we also work with uh, innovative um, tools such as uh, learning from human feedback that are uh, successfully applied uh, in uh, LLMs, in large language models, and we try to apply them in the different types of data than uh, natural language. And also uh, two other important tools as are generative AI and self-supervised learning, which help overcome uh, scarcity. And in particular, whenever the data is not labeled, these techniques help us do the training uh, without the labels. And the third, third thread uh, is about digital twins. Uh, that is the representation of the cardiac function at different levels and the integration with LLMs to provide uh, personal digital assistance services. Next slide, please. Okay, so we are a research group of uh, 15 people from the Athens University of Economics and Business. Um, we have projects in different verticals uh, where we apply uh, our AI techniques, uh, verticals such as energy, health, wireless networks, security, and agriculture. We coordinate the Horizon Europe project PREACT which is about AI and explainable AI in particular to predict uh, radiotherapy side effects for cancer patients. And we seek to join consortia under formation on the topics above that we could um, help um, with our um, expertise in AI. Uh, we are also interested in topic two called six, 
and uh, topic three, the one about biomarkers. And in terms of in-kind contributions, uh, because of the nature of the organization, we do not, uh, we cannot bring in-kind. So that's the presentation. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Jordanis. Uh, now our next speaker is uh, Miroslo. Miroslo, are you online? Yes, I am. I'm just trying to switch on the camera. Okay, the floor is yours. Okay, so good afternoon. Uh, I'm delighted to present to you uh, um, Genocardia project, our pioneering project that perfectly aligns with the uh, grant call team. Uh, next slide, please. Um, with genetic cardiovascular disease um, affecting uh, about 200 million individuals around the world, uh, Genocardia is dedicated to uh, solving this problem by harnessing the power of whole genome analysis. We are already making progress in uh, identifying those at risk and um, providing um, detailed uh, genetic profiling. Uh, however, our, our goal is not only to manage uh, those at risk, but to uh, streamline the patient journey um, from risk assessment to treatment, um, ensuring um, uh, a lasting impact on the uh, on the quality of life. So our goal is clear um, to provide better outcomes for patients, to reduce the burden of health system, uh, and empower individuals and communities uh, through uh, knowledge and preventive care. Next slide, please. Our plans for Genocardia project uh, involve expanding capabilities of our Imagine Me Life platform into a comprehensive integrative management system. Um, we aim to enhance our platform's ability to connect patients with a wider network of stakeholders, including specialists in medical device data um, collection, uh, telemonitoring, and personalized uh, healthcare planning. Uh, we plan also to integrate um, um, hardware like smartwatches and other health monitoring devices for long-term um, data acquisition um, to provide patients and clinicians with uh, actionable insights from combined data analysis, I mean, uh, genomic and um, behavioral data analysis. Uh, our vision includes also uh, developing um, personalized treatment, developing and uh, application of personalized treatment and health man management strategies uh, supported by uh, two-way patient system communication. Um, <clears throat> so uh, we think that these in initiatives are directly in line uh, with grants focus um, on um, early identification and long-term patient care. Next slide, please. Uh, we, as a, imagine me, we are a team of over 30 experts um, like bioinformaticians, biotechnologists, data analysts, but also um, doctors. We uh, um, our team can bring a wealth of knowledge in genetic analysis and digital health solution development. Um, actually, our platform is already used for comprehensive interpretation of genomic data and is ready to expand um, its functionalities um, for personalized care. Um, and we are not just developers or uh, scientists, but we have a, a great collaboration with um, cardiovascular research groups at the Medical University of Białystok, Medical University of Warsaw, and we are in close contact with the largest uh, diagnostic um, provider, diagnostic company, largest in, in Poland. Um, next slide, please. 
So to achieve the goals of the uh, um, development uh, of Genocardia platform and the whole project, we um, seek strategic collaboration with um, hospitals and cardiovascular disease um, experienced clinicians uh, for their expert insights, um, real world data and guidance on treatment plans. So this is key key factor here. Um, but also we want to expand the capabilities of our platform by a collaboration with medical device providers to incorporate new cutting edge um, monitoring technologies into our ecosystem. Um, also, we are looking for collaboration with pharmaceutical companies uh, to synergize on tailored treatment uh, approaches and also would be would be great to um, collaborate with uh, healthcare providers at least to evaluate the uh, economic impact um, and to explore potential pilot initiatives and what is in the in the center of of the whole initiative so the patient centric approach uh, um, we want to collaborate with uh, patient advocacy group to uh, ensure that our platform meets the real world needs and uh, expectations of patients so um, we think that by combining our expertise in genomics and uh, genomic data analysis proven by um, international certificates with uh, um, already um, provided services to thousands of patients, we want to expand our platform, imaging platform into um, a complete or uh, mm, sophisticated tool for uh, cardiovascular disease uh, mm, 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 or genetic related cardiovascular disease condition in the long term. So uh, that's why we are looking for partnerships to uh, make it happen. Thank you. Thank you, Miroslo. Now the next speaker is Lockman. Okay. Hello, uh, everyone. I, I'm Lokman Liu. I have been working in National Metrology Institute of Turkey at Electrochemistry Laboratory as a chief researcher and the head of Electrochemistry Laboratory. Our aim is to join a consortium as a, a partner uh, for the related topics one and uh, three. In this regard, now I try to explain our expertise about producing electrochemical biosensors and the voltammetry instrument. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, first, I would like to give very a brief uh, information about the technique we used. It's called voltammetry, which is briefly defined as an electrochemical technique in which the current is measured against the uh, applied voltage. Next slide, please. Now, uh, I would like to explain our expertise. During the COVID-19 period, we produce electrochemical sensors specific to spike and nucleocapsid proteins, uh, which are specific proteins of both the SARS-CoV-2 uh, virus and its antibody. We tested them on clinical samples confirmed by real-time PCR, and we obtained sensitivity and specificity values uh, over 90%. Uh, in our studies, we achieved to take results that are approximate to 1 billion times more sensitive than lateral flow kits and at least 100 times more sensitive than real-time PCR. Uh, therefore, I would like to state that we can produce electrochemical uh, sensors for the accurate diagnosis and the determination of current or future virals and or bacteriological disease. Uh, apart from these, we can also develop sensors for the determination of electrochemical active species uh, used as disease biomarkers. For example, many electrochemical sensors have been produced by us for the determination of cortisol, as you see on the uh, bottom left side, uh, which is a biomarker of emotional and psychological stress. And also, as you see, bottom middle side, uh, dopamine and uric acid, which are important biomarkers in monitoring Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. And also on the bottom uh, right side, levodopa, which is used in Parkinson's treatment and whose instantaneous levels are important to monitor. Next slide, please. Uh, in addition to the electrochemical sensors within the COVID-19 period, we produced voltammetry instrument and compatible software in our institute. You can see the images of our produced instrument on this slide. 
We only purchased sensor sporting material, screen printed electrode from a commercial company and modified them for our purpose. Next slide, please. And I also would like to share a slide with you. I like it very much when important scientists talk about uh, our team uh, for the work we did during the, uh, the COVID-19 period. This was a really big source of motivation for us, and I would like to uh, thank them through this channel also. Next slide, please. Finally, uh, our requested exercise is that if a sensor system similar to the antigen-antibody interaction is to be designed, research institutes, hospitals that can provide analyte specific materials or we can purchase them, uh, these, uh, are, uh, these will be useful. Uh, for example, if a specific protein of a virus is to be determined, materials such as peptides and antibodies specific to it uh, must be provided or uh, purchased. Then we can design a sensor by immobilizing them onto the electrode surface. And also hospitals that will provide real samples for analysis will be helpful. And research institutes experienced in uh, actual uh, sample processing will be very beneficial. Next slide, please. Uh, you can contact me with these uh, tools uh, if you would like. I will definitely respond uh, back. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Lokman. Uh, now, our next speaker is Grégoire. Hello, good afternoon, uh, everybody. My name is Grégoire Mercier. Um, I'm a physician and I'm co-founder of Canopy Med, um, a French startup. And so the, the proposal is around PREDIC, which is an AI-powered clinical decision making uh, dedicated to uh, patients with chronic heart failure. Next, please. So chronic heart failure is obviously uh, posing a great burden to uh, health systems in Europe. And a promising approach uh, could be to personalize uh, specifically post-discharge uh, patient pathways. But uh, cardiologists and healthcare professionals lack actionable data to uh, generalize this kind of strategy. And so the objective of our proposal is to uh, define as a consortium personalized patients' pathways according to their individual readmission risk uh, using PREDIC, which is a medical device, an AI-powered uh, clinical decision support, uh, and to assess the impact of this uh, overall strategy um, within a, a randomized controlled trial. In terms of impact, generally speaking, we are uh, considering, of course, improved outcome for patients themselves, uh, but also being able to uh, adapt PREDIC to several uh, countries and settings, and also to demonstrate uh, with a high um, um, confidence uh, the impact of this strategy. Next, please. So the the project could look uh, like this. That's just uh, a proposal, a suggestion, but uh, the most important activities uh, will be to adapt PREDICT, which has been designed in the French setting to other countries, uh, then to define with a large uh, consortium of stakeholders, uh, patients path pathways, and then to implement the RCT in order to, to assess the impact of this innovative uh, strategy. Um, next slide, please. What we can bring uh, to the project um, is uh, so first partners uh, with uh, Canopy Med, which is a company, as I said, a startup company, uh, and we have developed and, and validated Predic, uh, which again is an AI-powered uh, clinical decision support tool. We are also uh, in touch with several uh, hospitals in France uh, willing to participate in the RCT uh, and also with a CRO, uh, which is specialized in digital health. Uh, and of course, we have an, an SAB uh, to back uh, the project. And we can bring uh, as an in-kind contribution, of course, PREDIC, which again uh, is a clinically validated um, clinical decision support tool. Uh, next, please. 
And so we are uh, looking for a consortium to join. Uh, I think that's uh, uh, clearly the best option for us. Um, and namely, uh, other hospitals in, in different countries willing to participate in this uh, RCT, in this approach, but also research institutes uh, with a focus on being able to assess a multidimensional impact of uh, digital medical devices uh, and specifically clinical, organizational and economic impact. Uh, and also, we would be uh, willing to to uh, pass, I mean to uh, talk to companies developing interoperability and data integration platforms or tools that could be used uh, in an international um, hospital data. Next, please. Yes, thank you very much, and, and thank you to the uh, IHI team. For the thank, you. thank you, Grégoire, for your presentation. Uh, Pedro will be our next speaker. Yes. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Pedro Moreno Sanchez from the Decision Support for Health Research Group at Tampere University. Today, today I'm excited to share our idea uh, about bringing trustworthy AI for the detection of cardiovascular and heart diseases. Next slide, please. So I won't surprise anyone here by saying that, that AI will become a crucial component to transform how we predict and treat cardiovascular diseases. However, a significant challenge remains here, which is that uh, often the complex and black box nature of AI models uh, not only could create mistrust among healthcare professional and patient, but also hinders the clinical adoption of the AI solution. Therefore, our goal is to provide consortia with assets, with assets to address the trustworthy AI during the project uh, phases from its design to the deployment, engaging not only healthcare professionals, but also patients. And this includes ensuring human agency and oversight, technical robustness, privacy and data governance, transparency, diversity and non-discrimination, and accountability. By embedding these uh, principles into the AI model, we aim to create systems that clinicians can use to achieve accurate and reliable uh, diagnosis. Next slide, please. So this idea stems from a collaboration between Tampa University, located in Finland, and the renowned Spanish uh, Research and Development Center, Tecnelia. Uh, together, we bring our expertise proposing several key activities, all of them aligned with the trustworthy AI principles de defined by the European Commission. We are dedicated to enhancing the explainability of the cardiovascular disease prediction models, avoiding biases and discrimination in the prediction, and promoting an human in the loop approach that not only continually improves the accuracy and reliability of the models, but also ensures the expert oversight on those models. We also offer a proven methodology to evaluate trustworthy AI requirements at every project stage, encompassing technical, ethical, regulatory, and domain specific aspects. And additionally, we jointly explore new data driven biomarkers for cardiovascular diseases prediction and patient stratification. Beyond uh, this, our approach includes, includes the use of federated learning to respect patient privacy and data governance, alongside edge computing capabilities to enhance the accessibility and efficiency of the CVD prediction model. Next slide, slide please. So this team is formed by the Decision Support for Health Researcher Group from Tampa University and the, D and the Digital Health Platform at Technalia. We conduct our research and development, act and development action through different labs focused on uh, leveraging AI to make a significant impact on digital health. And our portfolio includes a set of explainable AI technologies, physiological signal and biomarker analysis approaches, and computational clusters for deep learning. We have a strong background built from significant roles in various European projects in the domain of trustworthy AI applied to uh, clinic, uh, cardiovascular dis uh, diseases. And these projects are part of the Horizon Europe and ERA permit programs and provide us with a strong connection with academic, industrial, clinical partners, as well as uh, healthcare providers in our respective regions, Finland and Spain, which offer valuable co collaboration opportunities for the consortium. As research organization, we cannot bring in kind contributions. So in conclusion, our idea makes an interesting choice for the consortium. So we are seeking 
to integrate in uh, a consortium that they are keen on leveraging trustworthy AI to make a major step forward in the clinical management of cardiovascular and heart diseases. And we are excited to work with partners or consortiums to bring this vision to reality. So thank you for your attention and we look forward to the opportunity to discuss further collaboration. Thank you very much, Pedro, for your presentation. Now our next speaker is Jesus. Yep. Um, so hi everyone. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here today. I am Jesus Prada Alonso, CEO of Aorus ML. Next slide, please. Okay, so what are the objectives uh, um, we try to tackle? So our goal is to respond to the needs of companies specializing in artificial intelligence and machine learning in healthcare. Uh, so what we do is create personalized product together with our clinical partners in a collaborative workflow. So we are used to work in cross-sectorial approaches for the development of solutions for healthcare. And in particular, we focus on projects with a strong innovation company component in the clinical care field. So broadly speaking, you could divide the applications of machine learning in healthcare into main branches. One will be uh, hospital management and the second one support uh, to the physician. We focus on this second area. So next slide, please. So what uh, is what we offer? What we offer is in general or expert expertise in development in the development of AI-based solutions for healthcare, but in particular, we have already developed three solutions in the cardiology area uh, that could be really relevant for this uh, topic. Uh, the first one is Sorus Atero, which is trying to uh, achieve the automatic detection of atherosclerosis uh, using deep learning models over clinical images. And it has a strong innovation component in the sense that it's not trying to make this screening in hospital, which is what is normally done, but on the primary care system. And for this purpose, we have tried to focus on retinography images and not echocardiogram, which is the, the clinical images that are normally used, because these type of images are way easier to collect on primary care institutions. So this could significantly um, improve the impact and the usefulness of these screening uh, solutions, okay? So uh, the second one is Eurusekonet, which is another deep learning based solution that focus 100% on the automatic analysis of echocardiograms. The main output, although not the only one, is the automatic calculation of the left ventricular ejection fraction, which is a really important clinical index that is used a lot in cardiology and basically it tries to measure uh, how well is your heart pumping. Uh, so it's used a lot to identify heart failure in patients. Uh, we also give another uh, clinical indexes, but this is the main one. Um, speaking of heart failure patients, we also have this solution called Aorus Cardio Monitor for the remote monitoring of patients with chronic heart failure. And it uses a combination of Internet of Things and wearables to collect data, machine learning to automatically analyze this data, and also large language model agents to interact with the patient to extract additional data, also to provide the feedback in a more natural way, and in general, increase the engagement of the user with our solution. Okay, so these will be three solutions that are or, uh, already developed and ready to use. Next slide, please. So what we are looking for, we are looking for a consortium that could be interested in use or expertise in the development of AI-based solutions and or integrate these three already development solutions in their proposal, okay? So, uh, this is everything I wanted to say in this presentation. Feel free to contact me through the B2B platform provided by AHA or contact me directly through the email that is provided with this uh, presentation. Thank you again and have a good day. Thank you, Jesus, for your presentation. Now the next speaker is Leonard. Yes, great afternoon, everyone. I am Leonard Fiele. I am the Chief Medical Officer here at NOAA Labs, and I'll be pitching our proposal for developing a voice-based digital biomarker to detect um, decompensation in chronic heart failure using machine learning. Uh, next slide, please. 
So uh, we've already talked about heart failure and its implication quite a lot today. Uh, so probably I'm going to spare you some details about this. But I think we are all now aware of the impact heart failure has on both healthcare systems, right, and patient life, right? It's a really unstable disease, and it really often decompensates, uh, resulting in frequent hospitalization of patients. So how can we uh, break through this vicious cycle? Come on, next slide, please. We are introducing a new and innovative way of how to do it. So traditionally, we've been doing it right in remote patient care settings through external devices, measuring vital data, ECG, et cetera. Um, but this usually comes quite late in the cycle of decompensation. And usually already the weight is really up and it's hard to keep patients out of the hospital. So what we are developing here at Norlabs is a solution using voice to detect decompensation earlier. And we are about 14 days earlier than traditional biomarkers that are based on vital data alone. And this allows us to really break through this vicious cycle, keeping patients out of the hospital, because we allow clinicians to uh, really make an impact to adapt medication and to decrease the fluid overload that usually results in hospitalization. So how exactly are we doing this? Next slide, please. Patients that uh, have chronic heart failure, they record their voice on a daily basis. And then our patent and model um, analyzes the features in the voice and automatically detects changes um, that correlate with uh, changes in the health status of patients. So we are really early in seeing, okay, we have an increase in fluid uh, overload uh, in the patient, or for example, we see also changes in heart rhythm that might in the end result in fluid overload and hospitalization. So we always compare this to a dry and wet state, and uh, we're currently working on getting more data and engaging more patients to train our model. Next slide, please. So what are we seeking? Um, we're definitely seeking research institutions um, for running our clinical trials. We're already um, running several clinical trials using voice in both clinical settings to analyze uh, how voice changes when a patient arrives in the hospital versus when he's discharged in heart failure. But we're also looking to deploying our solution in an outpatient setting, um, meaning that we have trials ongoing where patients uh, record their voice daily and seeing how we're able to keep them out of hospital because we're so early in the decompensation cycle. Um, to bring this into a larger setting, we're looking for public-private organization um, who are interested in uh, taking the next step in remote patient monitoring going away from external devices to digital biomarkers. Also, definitely looking for research uh, partners who are interested in the field of digital biomarkers, especially voice as a biomarker in heart failure. Um, next, please. Thanks. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Please feel free to contact me um, either through the platform or through my email address provided in presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Leonard, for your presentation. And now uh, the turn is to Alessandro. Okay, thank you. I will start the presentation. So, Alessandro Subrizzi and I, Birgitta Feltas, we work in the imaging department of the University Medical Center in Utrecht, the Netherlands, and we will present a proposal for a fast single cardiac sequence for patients with a cardiomyopathy. As a cardiovascular radiologist, I will provide some clinical information. Next slide, please. So, regular follow-up imaging is important for early detection in hereditary and acquired cardiomyopathies, and acquired such as can occur due to cardiotoxic effects of cancer treatment. And early detection will enable early intervention to prevent progression of heart failure and out-of-hospital cardiac arrest. Next slide, please. Just a few imaging. The bottom row shows cardiomyopathies at a young age that we should detect at an earlier phase to prevent out-of-hospital cardiac arrest and heart failure, as in these patients. Next slide, please. 
There is limited availability of cardiac MRI slots and trained technicians, and the scan times currently are relatively long. A fully automatic rebreathe 10-minute single MRI sequence is patient-friendly and technician-friendly and would shorten acquisition time substantially and would increase MR availability as at least three patients could undergo a cardiac MRI in the current MRI time slot. Next slide, please. Cardiac MRI is built off of different building blocks that give separate information on cardiac anatomy, function, and tissue characterization. Late gadium enhancement is important, but is slowly being replaced by assessment of T1 and T2 mapping and myocardial strain, also known as feature tracking, for the prognostic information. A single acquisition could replace these first four separate sequences and save a lot of time. Next slide, please. As our proposition overlaps the next slide, I will skip this slide. Next slide, please. Yeah, so the idea is to develop this uh, five dimensional fully automated uh, free briefing or free running uh, cardio protocol uh, in a, uh, ideally within the 10 minutes and you get all the information you want. So uh, volume, function, uh, strain, and then uh, MR parameters like T1, T2, uh, uh, relaxometry. With this, you will solve a logistical operational problem with scan time uh, and availability of technicians. Uh, um, uh, you will bring uh, innovations uh, in the cardiac images, which is basically part of this uh, larger uh, grant uh, idea. And, uh, and of course, the impact uh, uh, you can imagine having a short, robust uh, protocol that can be used for uh, regular follow up uh, or for longitudinal monitoring, uh, so based on uh, changes in, uh, in uh, values from baseline, uh, between baseline and follow up measurement. So something that you can really rely upon uh, given this quantitative uh, approach. Um, right, the idea is, of course, to, per to personalize this uh, and uh, especially in high risk individuals. Next slide. So very shortly, there's two main uh, technological components. Uh, we have uh, one part of the work uh, uh, aimed at getting uh, dynamic parameters like uh, scene volumes uh, and, uh, and strain. As you see here already in what we are running at the UMC Utrecht. Next slide, please. And the second component is a uh, relaxometry. Here you see uh, pro, yeah, uh, uh, applied in the in the brain, uh, three-dimensional uh, imaging, uh, T1, T2 parameters, and a one millimeter cubic resolution. This is the idea. Next slide, please. To bring together these two approaches, yeah, they're both based on a model based inversion of uh, raw, raw MRI data. So when you combine both into a single acquisition, you can uh, go full 5D or 4D time resolved dynamic and 3D quantitative information. And the output is uh, all the quantitative parameters that you need for a proper diagnosis. Next slide. So we offer expertise in radiologies, uh, especially in genetic and acquired cardiomyopathies, uh, expertise in technology, in MRI imaging, uh, optimization, uh, design of uh, protocols and reconstruction uh, uh, software. And I think we are a center of excellence for genetic cardiomyopathy and oncology. And we have uh, several hundred patients each year. So that can be, we can leverage upon to, for clinical validation. Next slide. Yeah, so we look for MRI manufacturers with, uh, with strong development in this direction, uh, imaging software companies with uh, AI for post processing, principles for other devices companies, uh, for instance, in the interventional uh, area. Yeah, that's. Yeah, thank you. Thank you both for your presentation. And our next speaker is uh, Harald. Yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, can you see me or not? No, we just have your background, Harald. Ah, it's one of these uh, WebEx setting. Let me see. Uh, FaceTime camera. Now, yeah, we can Very see. Good. Perfect. The floor is yours. Thank you. Yeah, um, the proposal uh, is named redefining heart related diseases mechanistically to enable precision curative therapy and prevention. So next slide, please. So what 
the challenge is that we're actually addressing is that in the moment we do not understand the molecular causes of heart disease. I mean, of course, with the exception of some cardiomyopathies or if there is a, a toxic side effect of an anti-cancer drug, but for most diseases like uh, coronary artery disease or heart failure, we have descriptive terms, but we do not understand the molecular causes of the disease. Um, so the improvement that we will then uh, provide, we will provide a causal molecular mechanism, and we of course then subdivide these current descriptive heart disease terms, and thereby we are able to diagnose them. We are focused in the moment on very simple low cost diagnostic assays, so not multi omics. And uh, we validate then this diagnosis by high precision phase 2AB clinical drug repurposing trials. The potential results, therefore, are that we can actually start curing heart disease instead of chronically treating symptoms. And if the link between diagnosis and uh, treatment, curative treatment works, then we can even start thinking of preventing heart disease by detecting that molecular disease mechanism uh, as uh, soon as possible and ideally start treatment before the symptoms arise. Next slide. This whole concept is based on the Repo4U platform, which integrates advanced bioinformatics, artificial intelligence, drug repurposing, um, phase two clinical trials, uh, regulatory advice, and, and a network of IP specialists and so forth that we can build on. And the idea is, um, if you see in the uh, lower left, a uh, couple of patients that all have something like heart failure, but then we would um, identify those patients that have a specific uh, mechanism of heart failure, and we would only treat those patients with uh, a specific drug combination that targets this mechanism. Um, the diagnostics could either be wet lab, of course, ideally we would slowly convert this into uh, machine learning algorithms, then those patients get exactly the drugs from which they benefit. According to regulatory advice, we can very often skip the phase one study because we're doing drug repurposing. We're using drugs that are already on the market. And also, according to regulatory advice, we may in several cases uh, skip phase three because phase three trials are very often actually with respect to world weight a real world patient not very uh, predictive and rather uh, come to market very quick uh, and have uh, with conditional approval a phase four study. Next slide, please. So the expertise and resources that we offer is the entire drug repurposing platform, including, of course, the advanced bioinformatics to detect those uh, mechanisms. A diagnostics uh, workflow that is uh, based on uh, biobank validation before we go into a clinical trial. And of course, this network pharmacology strategy to then target those uh, signaling mechanisms. The ICOP is this platform access uh, and the IKA is uh, a, a diamond open access publications in uh, our journals, Network Medicine and Drug Repurposing. Next slide. The expertise that uh, we request or could imagine collaborating with are SMEs uh, that are uh, interested in taking those diagnostics TLR-wise forward up to the market or machine learning algorithms that actually replace wet lab diagnostics. Of course, we need large companies because it's an IHI call, uh, either pharma or medical devices companies that like the entire workflow, you know, from prevention up to curative treatments. Um, research institutes, biobanks are for us very important, BBMRI, UK Biobank, health technology experts, because it's of course not enough to just have a nice uh, new treatment or diagnostic, it also needs to be reimbursed. 
Um, and uh, we run our clinical trials uh, at very low costs by uh, working with clinicians that are interested in the research and don't view clinical trials as a tertiary income. So, for instance, one of our strategic partners is Valencia in Clevia, uh, with whom we have just finished a heart failure trial. Others are, of course, patient organizations. We run our own patient, online patient network, but we're happy to work with any other patient organizations. They're very important in defining patient reported outcomes, regulators, and patent lawyers, how to uh, secure the IP. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Hard, for your presentation. And our next speaker is Giri. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Yuri Ante, CEO of Sona Health, and uh, we are a startup uh, developing a new tube for, for the GPs in mainly in the primary health care. And the title for us is uh, All in One Heart Monitor to Measure Critical Heart Functions with a Single Scan. And the reason for us uh, as a, be, uh, being a startup to join this call or this discussion is that we think that our solution is pretty cool and it fits perfectly for this call. Next slide, please. So a few words about our solution. Uh, so, so we have developed a device which is uh, integrating uh, microphones, ECG, ultrasound and motion sensors into one device, which is uh, quite easy to use. Uh, we have a, a quite strong know-how on the MEMS technology and uh, we are utilizing in our solution the PMUT technology, which enables uh, quite interesting uh, solutions. Uh, the device has been, uh, and the whole solution has been planned in a way that the, the scan can be done uh, either by nurse or doctor. And uh, as I said, the target uses are, are mainly on the primary health care, but also we think that emergency care and the first aid units can also utilize this kind of uh, solution. So what we are doing is uh, with our scan, we can assess the heart sounds. Uh, uh, and with uh, the preclinical data we have been collecting shows that it's working uh, extremely well. We are also able to, to measure uh, the volume movement of the heart and also give an estimate of the ejection fraction uh, with the, with the fir first uh, appointment with the doctor. Uh, we are collecting the data simultaneously from four points uh, and uh, all data is uh, being uh, stored in the uh, cloud. And the main, let's say, the key benefits for uh, of this approach is that uh, that we think that we will increase the quality of the initial patient evaluation quite much. Uh, it will be fastening the process uh, uh, as uh, we can be sure that the patients referred to to uh, further investigations are only those that really need for the for the further analysis. And uh, by storing all the data, we can also uh, provide a good follow up systems, uh, also comparing the heart sounds. And uh, this connectivity model uh, enables uh, uh, remote analysis and telemedicine. Uh, next slide, please. So what we are doing currently, uh, we have our first uh, version of the device uh, up and running. Uh, we are doing a first clinical trial uh, at the moment. Uh, these findings and, and also uh, uh, a lot of uh, meetings and interviews with KOLs are then providing the the uh, plan for the next version. And the goal for next year is to is to finalize the the next device device version and uh, and uh, make uh, more clinical studies and and go through the regulation pathway. And as we think that this uh, solution is really uh, what the call is all about, we hope that. There is a consortium that would also be interested in to hear more about our solution. Next slide. The key uh, expertise and resources that we can uh, offer for the consortium uh, comes from our uh, founding team. We have a really experienced and knowledgeable uh, founding team uh, as a startup and uh, and uh, we, we, we have a lot of experience on uh, making uh, disruptive solutions into market and, and 
maybe the special unique uh, knowledge slice on the PMO technology. Next slide, please. So what we are uh, looking for is uh, uh, a wide partner SIP network uh, to support our uh, product development. Uh, also uh, to, to, to be part of our next clinical trials and uh, last but not least to, to help to, to, to reach the key OLs, uh, key opinion leaders and, and uh, gain more uh, awareness through that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yuri, for your presentation. So the next speaker now is Thomas. Hello, everyone. I'm Thomas. I'm uh, yeah. Thanks. I'm uh, from the University of Radetz Kralove in the Czech Republic, and our lab focuses on using sensors, uh, uh, wearable sensors, environmental sensors, for improving disease management, in particular in cardiac, respiratory, and metabolic diseases. Next slide. Please. Historically, medical decision making was based on sporadic clinical tests, but nowadays we can access a continuous flow uh, of sensor based data uh, from daily lives of our patients. And these data should be harnessed to tackle some of the, uh, some of the problems uh, in disease management, such as better monitoring of heart failure progression, improved post-surgical recovery, et cetera, et cetera. Next slide, please. To tackle these opportunities, our approach consists of several steps. Uh, firstly, we integrate data from various sensors, not just one sensor. We don't look at just one data flow from one sensor, but we look at many sensors simultaneously. Secondly, and uh, we strongly believe that the true power lies in enriching those sensor data with the context that only patients can provide, how they are feeling, uh, what they are doing, etc. Only in this way, we can get a truly multidimensional view of their health status. We collect those data by triggering short surveys on their smartphones uh, at the right moment, uh, which is informed uh, by the sensor data. So, for example, when we detect uh, deterioration in the heart rate variability, we can trigger a survey asking about recent stressful events, uh, etc. Next, we use all those data combined. Sorry, not the next slide, but the next point. If you could please go back. Thank you. So, the next step is combining all those data to develop digital uh, biomarkers uh, for early diagnosis, disease tracking, and prognostic assessment using machine learning approaches. And ultimately, we use those algorithms to continuously evaluate the real time data to trigger either uh, self management interventions, targeting, for example, sedentary behavior, stress reduction or alerts to medical professionals. Now, next slide, please. So what we have to offer first and foremost, it's the Health React platform, uh, which integrates a diverse array of uh, sensors, uh, including our own ballistography enabled pads under, under the mattresses that continuously monitor HRV, respiration rate and other vital signs. But HealthSreal also integrates many other uh, commercially available sensors, such as activity trackers, Fitbits, for example, sleep monitors, continuous glucose monitors, Dexcom, or wearable air pollution sensors. And it's ready and scalable for future expansions that can happen within a week. HealthSreal also uh, triggers those surveys and intervention prompts uh, by continuously evaluating the streams of data and using programmable rules to detect events of interest. Then we also possess uh, uh, expertise in machine learning techniques. We have experience with collecting uh, 
data from uh, large cohorts. Right now, we collect data from 600 subjects uh, across four countries, uh, four sensors at the same time. And we have a large experience with clinical populations, uh, for example, heart failure patients, etc. Next slide, please. Yeah, this is just a sneak peek at the at the interface of Health React, which serves for setting setting the rules, as I mentioned. Next slide, please. So we seek a coordinator or a consortium partner or partners. Uh, who would be interested in using the combination of sensor data and patient reported context to develop digital biomarkers and interventions for some of those opportunities that I mentioned earlier? Thank you. Thank you, Thomas, for your presentation. Now we will have the last presentation uh, from Christelle. Uh, Christelle, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, everyone. I cannot see my slide. Voila, it's coming. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, very happy to present uh, the concept uh, uh, for um, uh, this call, uh, developed uh, both by Edwards Life Sciences together with uh, GE Healthcare. And this concept is called HeartPass EU for Heart Clinical Pathway Enhancement in Europe. Next, please. We heard many times uh, in the in the previous presentations that the burden of cardiovascular disease is uh, is major. It is by far the number one killer in Europe. Across among the large set of cardiovascular disease, uh, stroke heart disease, we have a specific interest in stroke heart disease, uh, which is um, which are diseases that affect the structure of the heart, and in particular the heart valves. And uh, these diseases are linked to aging and can generally not be prevented. This is why, with the demographic transition, uh, stroke heart disease is expected to uh, is, is today and is expected to be in the future a massive and a growing burden uh, for for Europe. We might be interested as well, uh, together with um, GL Care, uh, in tackling uh, atrial fibrillation in this uh, in this call. Next, please. The major challenge we have identified uh, in the management uh, of cardiovascular disease patient is the fragmented and suboptimal uh, pathway. Awareness is low for many diseases, and typically, typically on stroke heart disease, uh, most patients in Europe are not simply not aware of the symptoms of stroke heart disease, so they cannot go and meet uh, a GP or cardiologist. Detection is of uh, heart valve disease typically is dramatically suboptimal. We estimate that uh, less than 30% of elderly people have a re regular heart auscultation. Diagnosis is, non is a poorly standardized driving delay in treatment, and treatment is largely um, suboptimal and uh, inequitable. Uh, and again, on stroke heart disease, we estimate that four out of five patients suffering from severe forms of stroke heart disease are simply not treated. On top of that, there is a dramatic lack of integration of multimodal data and on, on care teams uh, along the, the care pathway. Next, please. Um, I, I think there is probably something missing on the slide. Yes, if we can move forward. Yes, again. Perfect, thank you very much. Um, we strongly believe that Reducing the burden of heart disease will be possible only if we manage to reach a strong integrated clinical management of cardiovascular disease in Europe. It means defragmenting, it means that we need to defragment the different steps of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the care pathway uh, and to put patient at the center and to put obviously around the patient uh, all, the, 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 all the healthcare professionals Obviously, the, the, norm, the classic and normal one uh, from the GP to the general cardiologist, the surgeons, and the, and the and, um, interventional cardiologist, but also the pharmacist, the nurse, and the, and the family and carers. This uh, integration sh should go with uh, a complete integration of data, of multimodal data. Also, to develop an innovative, organi innovative organizational processes and, innovate, um, and obviously embarking innovative technology. Next, uh, next slide, please. 
So our proposition to improve the care pathway from awareness, detection, diagnosis, treatment, and follow-up is the following. First, we aim at testing novel secondary prevention strategies in order to uh, trigger early detection and diagnosis of patients who are in it. The second approach is to develop and test new organizational approaches to maximize the efficiency of care, uh, to support HCPs in the context of uh, staffing issues, and to obviously ensure patient access to, uh, to treatment. The third, um, the third part of the proposition is to uh, test a large set of innovative technologies, typically AI uh, technologies, AI uh, decision, uh, decision tools, to maximize uh, the clinical outcome of the, of the, along the patient pathway. The fourth, the fourth approach is really to take this test, take these innov innovative approaches and validate them um, uh, in the treatment and management of total heart disease and potentially AFib. And last but not least, to design, to design and validate a scalable and sustainable blueprint for these approaches in order uh, that uh, this, these approaches uh, become, uh, become um, something that, that will bring, uh, that will bring um, I would say, value uh, to, the, to the cardiovascular care pathway, care pathway in the future. Next, please, and it will be my final one. So obviously, we are, uh, together with the GL Care, we are happy to work with um, innovative companies providing new detection, uh, diagnostic, and treatment solutions. Happy to work with clinicians because we need to innovate in terms of process and organizations for an optimized patient pathway. And obviously, uh, we will need to work with economic and uh, regulatory experts to evaluate uh, these solutions and make them uh, happen in, in, in real life. So thank you very much for, for your attention. Thank you, Christian, for your presentation. So this was our last presentation for the, this session. So I would like to thank you all the speakers for the presentation and also thank you uh, everyone who attended the, today's session. Uh, remember that tomorrow we'll have also a, pit, a pitting session for topic two called seven. So uh, I'm looking forward to have you during this session. So I'm closing the webinar now and I wish you a very nice day. Bye bye.